Hi and welcome to Game Reactor TV. I'm sitting here with Mr. Luis Castle and we're going to talk about the strategy, strategy genre and, and how it all started out with Command and Conquer and Red Alert. So, um, how did it all start out? Well, I guess uh, it started with Westwood, and Westwood started in my garage in Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, myself and Brett had done some consulting work together, doing some games, and we just decided that it would be great if um, we actually had our own company that we could just make the kinds of products we wanted to make and not have all that interference from those business guys worried about making money. So uh, we did that. We followed our hearts and our dreams, and uh, it led to some great success. We had a wonderful time with it. Okay, cool. Uh, what's the big difference between working like in your garage and, and working for a big company like EA? Well, even Westwood, uh, by the time we had been acquired by EA, was already about, uh, I'd say about 200 people, maybe just shy of that. And then once we became part of Electronic Arts, we even grew to 250. So Westwood Studios was a pretty big company at that. I mean, the difference between the first seven years of Westwood, where we were only 28 people, to the uh, the last few years before we consolidated at uh, you know 250 was really dramatic. Um, the team sizes weren't um, that much bigger between those two times. Uh, now they're absolutely huge, but the process of building the games with that big of a company is uh, a very different process. The Command and Conquer game and, and uh, eventually the Red Alert game, how did, where did you get the inspiration from? Um, well, we had started with a game called Dune 2, which was a, we wanted to make a strategy game, and we had had a great deal of success with the Eye of the Beholder series of uh, fantasy role-playing games. Uh, at that point in time, we had introduced this idea of real-time fantasy role-playing in the D&D universe, and although there had been a couple other games that were similar, this was one that was really different for, especially for D&D, a really rich rules universe that was in real-time. And we thought, well, if that applies to role-playing games, why not do that with strategy games? And we did with Dune 2, where we made, made the force the player to make decisions decisions in real time. That changed everything about the game experience. And although the, the strategy part of it wasn't as rich as some of the games we had done for SSI previously, it was rich enough to make it um, a very satisfying strategic game, a strategy game, but also something that put a lot of time pressure on you. Well, once we had done Dune 2, that led to, well, what are we going to do next? And we would got played around with some fantasy ideas, but eventually it became Command and Conquer, um, and set in a in the kind of current war, maybe just a, just a little bit in the future. And what would happen if um, terrorists had attacked the the world's largest cities and became a, a real threat? It turned out to be fairly realistic. That wasn't the intent. The intent was what was sort of our worst nightmare, and uh, unfortunately, a lot of that's come to pass. And that was really the inspiration for the original CNC. Uh, the the video sequences came out of the CDs, the original. Um, use of the CDs and being able to play full screen and um, full screen audio and video. And that gave us a lot of ability to film people and then put them into our games, which led to the whole storytelling sequences that, that you've that the fans have come to love and enjoy. Uh, so, so you think that the genre has evolved uh, over the years? Well, it certainly has evolved quite a bit. Um, obviously, the style of the gameplay and what the kinds of things you do are um, consistent or it wouldn't be a genre. If you de deviate too much, it's no longer a real-time strategy game. Um, but that being said, products that we've made and products that have been made by our competition have really evolved it and taken it to all new levels. And I think with Red Alert 3, we've got some really great uh, ideas on how that might even take it another level with the cooperative multiplayer and all the, um, all the uh, naval um, expanding the bases and resources and units in the Navy. It's really fantastic stuff. So, so do you think that the genre has um, taken a step into the next generation yet? Um, yeah, absolutely. I think that um, the, the RT, uh, RTS games in general have really stepped forward as the next generation consoles have been available for us to build RTS games on. And uh, PCs, the, the, you know, I would say the last four or five years of PCs have really made a huge difference in what we can do. So, so do you have a, a favorite RTS game out there now? Uh, well, I mean, apart from our own, because I always like our own games, so without uh, using our own, I would guess that um, Company of Heroes was probably my favorite in recent years, a great game. Okay. Uh, and uh, among, the mo among the ones you've made yourself? Oh, absolutely. Th that's pretty easy, actually. I still think that uh, my favorite two were um, Red Alert 2 with Yuri's Revenge added in and uh, Tiberian Sun. And although I loved Command & Conquer 3, don't get me wrong, they did a wonderful job with it, there's something nostalgic about Tiberian Sun that, um, that really... I, I remember it so fondly. So, 
Uh, how do you consider the competition coming out now? Is uh, is StarCraft two and and eventually Halo Wars? What do you think about that? Well, I don't obviously I don't know the games because I haven't played them yet. Uh, I've seen a little bit on StarCraft two, almost nothing on Halo Wars. Uh, but what I think about them, um, great. I mean, I know that Blizzard will do a great product, and when they do a great product, it makes people like RTS games, which is good for the business overall. So uh, certainly not worried or concerned. In fact, looking forward to that. Uh, Halo Wars uh, only the, in the sense that um, I really believe that consoles and console players de deserve and, and can experience a full featured RTS game. And I've heard an awful lot of talk about um, kind of changing what, what it means to be an RTS game and um, maybe it'll be a fine game but if they deviate too much from a full featured RTS what, we're, what we'd come to expect, um, I guess I would feel that it wouldn't truly be an RTS game. Maybe it would be real time and maybe strategy but um, I would uh, I would hesitate to call it the same category that uh, you know, sort of StarCraft II and the CNC universe lives in. Uh, how is it being here in Russia and talking about the the Red Alert series? Well, it's absolutely fantastic. I mean, growing up, I couldn't imagine ever coming to to Moscow. I always w wanted to get a chance to come and at least see what it would look like. And just the thought of coming and you know, at the time you'd have to be under guards and all the security. It just seemed like it would be impossible. And it's just a wonderful thing to see the world's changed enough to where, you know, we can walk around the streets and see all the great sites and go into museums. And uh, it's just, it's fantastic. And especially for the Red Alert universe, of course, because uh, it's with a great deal of um, uh, respect, uh, honestly, for the Cold War and for the power of the Soviet Union that, um, that we created the Red Alert universe in the first place. So uh, it's great to be here. Okay, cool. Thanks for your time. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Thanks. Geeks. <laughs> uh. <laughs> what? I mean, video games. I'm a geek. Okay, what's going on? <laughs> There's no escaping that. <laughs> no, it is.